Melvin Stoner. I'm not home right now. But all you have to do is leave your name, number, and any message after the sound of the beat. I promise to get right back to you unless I owe you money. This is a friend. I just want you to know that your pal, Damien Tyler, may be in trouble. And I'm telling you, you better do something about it and fast. Oh, hold it right there. Strap on your engines and turn right around. Why? We gotta go places. Well, I haven't checked in with a sergeant yet. I just got a report of a sniper, Montrose Avenue. He's shooting, shooting at you now. He's shooting at people from a rooftop or a window. It's just give me a small minute. caliber pistol. That's nasty. So let's get going. All right, I gotta get ready. All right, don't be long. Troy, how are we doing? Real fine, Doc. I'm getting tired of here, though. It reminds me too much of other places I've been. Really? Yeah, I think there'd be no comparison. Uh, you thought I was talking about the joint? No, nah, I was thinking of, uh, well, well, you know, clinics and, and, and places like that. Uh, how's your, uh, how's your head feeling? Well, it hurts only when I laugh. <laughs> Luckily, there aren't too many comedians in the place. Anyway, I feel good enough to go back to work. Well, now, listen, I'd take it easy if I were you. It can't be helped, Doc. I was only on the job a couple of days. I can't afford to start collecting sick pay yet, can I? Well, listen, is somebody coming by to, to take you home? Your sister, maybe? Yeah, Dee Dee said she'd come by. Well, good. You know, you're a lucky man to have a girl like Dee Dee for a sister. <laughs> because of the free legal advice. Well, it may be free to you, but it's been very valuable to an awful lot of people in this town. She, you know, she's very highly thought of. She's got a reputation as a fighter. She was always like that. Even as a kid, the guys on the block was always scared to tangle with Dee Dee Bannister. <laughs> I imagine she's saved an awful lot of those guys from having to go to prison, huh? Yeah, that's true. My sister, the Crusader, right? And I know what you're thinking. How could a nice girl like Dee Dee has a brother like me, huh? Well, you are a little bit different from her. Yeah, we're opposites, aren't we? I mean, she's a lawyer, I break the laws. Oh, I did. And right now, I'm just a working man, right? L listen, let me ask you something. Now, what do you think it took to get my big sister through law school? I'm sure it wasn't easy for her. No, I'm not talking about her, Doc. I'm talking about the family. See, every cent the family could scrape together was put into that cookie jar for the law school. And what do you think was left over for me? Do you think you might be feeling just a little bit sorry for yourself this morning, Troy? Uh, who, me? No. <laughs> see, I'm glad Dee Dee's a lawyer. Especially if it'll keep me out of the slammer. Huh? Look hey, who's Calvin. here. Hello, Troy. Yeah. Well, I can uh, leave you alone now. You got some company. Remember what I said about taking it easy, man? So long. Yeah. Copper. <laughs> Hey, what's this all about? You come here to shove me around once more for luck? I, uh, I came to say I'm sorry about what happened, Troy. To do what? I think you heard me. I just felt I might have been a little rougher with you than I had to be the other night. Look, if you don't want to accept the apology, that is okay, too. I just wanted to offer it anyway. Well, did he ask you to do this? No, she did not. Although I must admit I wouldn't be doing it if it weren't for your sister. Well, look, that's all I came to say. So, uh, well, there is one more thing. I, uh, I wanted to let you know I'm gonna do everything I can to get the first charges dropped. You mean that? Troy, Dee Dee told me that, uh, she can't handle your case in court. And believe me, without her, you haven't got a prayer. Man, you will do anything to make it with my sister, won't you? <laughs> I've never been 
to a party like this before in my life. I mean, there were all these men running around in tuxedos. In so black tie. Wait, you say black tie because it sounds more elegant. Well, they were wearing a lot more than just black ties. <laughs> sounds like you two kids are becoming a couple of social climbers, right, Dee? Uh, yes, very definitely high society. You should have seen high society last night, Sid, coming in, stumbling and giggling like a couple of teenagers home from the senior prom. Now, the reason why we didn't turn on the light is because we didn't want to wake you, right? Right. Next time, turn on the light. Uh, how come you two got invited to this party anyway? Yeah, I was wondering about that, too, since you don't know Skylar Whitney from Adam. Well, sure I do. Adam doesn't wear any clothes at all. Skylar Whitney had on a black tie. Well, I don't know what difference it makes. I mean, he obviously has heard of us. Well, it's heard of you. You're the one who got the invitation. No kidding. Oh, that's very peculiar. I mean, he couldn't have seen you in this place. Maybe down at the theater. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's what it is. That's what it was. I mean, that's what the human gorilla said. Well, Gunther Wagner. You know him. He's big, bald, ugly. Well, he said that he saw the two of us down at the theater when we were rehearsing our rock and roll act, and he thought we were good, so we told Sky Whitney, and uh, that's how we got invited. That sounds a little strange to me. But as long as you had a good time. Well, you know, uh, speaking of theater, I probably better get down there. I promised Jim I'd give him a hand this morning. Are you working on your day off? Ooh, greater love, half new waitress. I'll see you guys <laughs> later. Bye-bye, have fun. Amit, uh, thanks for uh, coming by the office this morning. Uh, am I wrong, or uh, is there something funny about the way she's been acting? Sid Mitzi always acts a little funny. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, you want anything else? Uh, no, nothing else for me, thanks. I have some important business to take care of this morning. Like uh, keeping somebody out of jail, huh? That too, but I have to get him out of the hospital first. Well, uh, hello, Miss Martin. Hi. Hey, listen, uh, can I give you a lift? No, thanks. Hey, it's okay. Uh, come on, really. Uh, Mr. Whitney's not going to be using the car until later this afternoon. Come on, uh, where would you like to go? I'm going to the Whitney Theater, and I would much rather walk. Well, hey, listen, that, that's crazy. Now, look, I, I can whip you down there in no time at all. What's the matter? Are you afraid to drive with me? Hmm? I mean, I can't do you any harm when I'm driving, can I? For all I know, you've got eight arms, like a bald octopus. <laughs> Whitney Theater, huh? Oh, why not? Might be fun. <laughs> are the preliminary drawings. This is the, the main stage entrance and the exits. Well, it looks simple enough, but I'm sure it isn't. Yeah, well, you've got to understand all the action before you could design the set. Say, didn't you say you had a, a lunch appointment? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep it any longer. I think you know what we need. Well, you're doing a heck of a job. I mean, I should be paying Hi, you. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Okay, what can I do? Well, you can start by saying goodbye to me. I'm off to Sid's Tavern. Hey, these are really great. I mean, have you started work on these? Oh, no, these are some sketches Jim just showed me. Yeah, that was a, a showcase that I did in Los Angeles. Well, they're great. Well, so long. I'm off to keep my doctor's appointment. Okay, see ya. Bye. I was sure that he said he had a luncheon appointment. Boy, it must be great to do a real play. I mean, every time I get close, something always happens. Don't get discouraged, Mitz. Well, I don't know. Now that you and uh, Buffy Revere are partners and you're bringing in all those road companies. Remember what I told you about the road companies? They use local talent. Mitz, you're going to get on stage. Well, I am not holding my breath. Hey, um, can I ask you a question? Sure. Why didn't you go to Skylar Whitney's party? I mean, I know you and Sky Whitney are practically, you know, uh, associates. I mean, he does own the theater. He didn't invite me. No reason he should. Well, I thought because you and Val... Because Val was the date, and she was the hostess, and she was wandering around with cheese and crackers. Well, there wasn't any cheese and crackers. All they had was hors d'oeuvres and caviar and junk like that. Oh, good. I'm glad I didn't go. I only like cheese and crackers. You know something? What? I don't think I like this Skylar Whitney guy. I mean, he's very handsome. Well, that's a good reason not to like him, Mitz. I, I, mean, I mean, he's smooth, you know? He's a little too smooth. He dances too well. Strike two. 
And I really don't like the way he was dancing with Valerie. I mean, it was, it was too close, you know, it was a, a little close and it was a bit much. It was slow and dreamy and he was holding her real tight. Would you like to finish that job over there that Cliff started the other day? The paint's right there. Yeah. I'll, I'll just let you deal with it. Okay. Okay? Sure. Where, where are you going? I'm going to the river to ride my bike. I'll be back in about a half hour. Okay. Have fun. I wonder if Helen Hayes started this way. So this is going to be down to the theater. <laughs> Don't do that. Listen, I told you that you should ride with me. I was coming here anyway. I'm just checking up on things for my boss. Well, then maybe you'd like to talk to Jim Dietrichson. I mean, he's in the back. Uh, no, he's not. He just left, and I saw him. And we're all alone in this big place, just you and me. Well, I don't know about you, Mr. Wagner, but I have got a lot of work to do, so if you will please excuse me. Wait, wait, wait. Now, you shouldn't be doing stuff like this. You should be rehearsing that number of yours. I saw you do it, remember? The one where you wore those uh, hot pants. It was not. Come on, let's see you try it again. Hey! Hey! Mr. Wagner, I am a very busy woman. Besides, Hey, listen, I'll hum it for you, okay? Bump, 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 bump. Come on, hey, maybe you can teach me the routine, huh? Right. Come on, yeah. come on. Hey! What are you? Let go of me! Ow! <laughs> Feisty little devil. <laughs> yeah, I think this is gonna be more fun than I thought. Thing to uh, drink while you're waiting? No, thank you, Sid. I will hold off till my lunch guest gets here. It's not that sweet little sister-in-law of yours, is it? No, no, it's not. Jody, it's her portrait artist, as a matter of fact. There he is. Hi, Dr. Kavanaugh. Dad, sit down. Oh, well, now that I've got the two of you here, maybe I can get both of you something. Uh, how about an aperitif? Oh, no, thanks. Nothing for me. I'll have a very strong iced tea. <laughs> you got it. Chad, thank you very, very much for joining me. And please don't call me Dr. Kavanaugh, all right? This is not a consultation, it's just lunch. Are you sure it's not a consultation? Well, all right, maybe it is. I'm sure you know what it is I want to ask you about. Jody and this kidnapping or this political abduction, whatever it is you want to call it. Yeah, I figured that's what it was. I don't know uh, how much you know about the uh, Frankly, this is silly. I'm not, I'm not at liberty to tell you much about it. The, the police have asked us both to keep it very secret. But since you knew these kidnappers were from Eden, you thought I might know more than most people. Is that it? Chad, let me tell you what we're worried about. And we, meaning my wife and me. And Gavin Wiley. Yeah, and Gavin, yeah. At any rate, we are afraid that these young people, uh, the man especially, was Pietro, made a very strong impression on Jody. I'm not saying she was brainwashed by them, but still, we get the sense that she was very impressed about what she learned or what she thinks she learned about what's going on in your country. Now, I don't have any idea about what's going on in your country. I have a hard enough time following the politics back here at home, you know what I mean? What is it you wanted to know? Well, I guess I better just ask you very bluntly. Do you think it's possible that your own government, and I guess it obviously has to include your father, is in the grip of some underworld organization. Here you go, Doc. Thank you, sir. Is that question too blunt? No, I appreciate the directness, because it allows me to give you a direct answer. Which is? My father is an honest man. He's the head of the government. Now, there may be some unscrupulous types around him. I wouldn't know. You see, I've only been home three or four times in the last four years. I know that's not much of an answer, but that's all I can give you right now. I see. All right, let me, let me ask you another question, completely different. Do you know anything about a certain prophecy? Prophecy? 
concerning a woman named Marie Bonaventure. Oh, that. Yeah, sure, I know about that. I mean, do American kids know about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny? Would you put the prophecy in the same category as those? Well, look, Miles, I don't... Wait a minute. Are you saying that these kidnappers mistook Jody I mean, for a descendant of the Martyr of Eden? All right, look, Chad, not a word about this, please. It's imperative, not a word. Because oh. it's obviously a mistake, right? No, a foolish, yeah. a foolish mistake. We just want to have Jody be able to forget that it ever happened. And we thought you might be able to help. Hello? Hello, is this Poppy Johnson? <clears throat> yes. Uh, this is Calvin Stoner. Do you remember me? Yeah, sure, you're Damien's friend. Has something happened? Well, um, not that I know of, although I, uh, have a peculiar feeling something might. Look, I just got a message on my machine from a woman warning me that my friend Damien might be in danger. Was that you? Me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the voice was kind of muffled. I couldn't really make it out, but I can't think of anybody else who's got Damien's best interest at heart or who knows someone who hates him as much as your boss, Eddie Laura. Listen, if you think that I'd rat on my own boss, you're crazy. I didn't leave any message, and that's all that there is to it. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd ask. And if I were you, I wouldn't be wasting so much time calling around trying to find out who left the message. I mean, hey, I'd be out there trying to find out if it was true or not, seeing if your pal isn't really in danger. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. There. That's where the shots came from. Somewhere up in there. You said it was a small caliber, 22? That's right. Shot from the 22 in the right spot can kill you just as dead as a magnet can. Well, that's for sure. There's 30 windows, maybe half a dozen rooftops that somebody could fire from from up there. Look, I'll stay here this part of the alley, check it out. Why don't you try around the corner and see what you can see? All right, but I don't think we're gonna get much. Take your time getting here. I've been here for more than an hour, little brother. I was downstairs settling up your bill and getting your discharge papers. I'm sorry. I always underestimate you, don't I, Dee Dee? Hello? When you're not overestimating yourself, Troy. Hello? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Yeah, I just pack a few things. By the way, you know who was here before? Who? That policeman friend of yours. You know, the guy who put me here? Here. Yeah, came by to apologize. How about that? Well, I'd say that was very decent of him. <laughs> he also said that he would do his best to see that the charges against me were dropped. How about that? I wouldn't count on that, Troy. The process may already have gone too far. I don't think there's anything that Calvin could do, even if he was the arresting officer. Wait a minute, don't give me that. All he's got to do is stand up on the witness stand and say he, he made a mistake, that's all. Troy, Calvin may have come by here to apologize to you, but that does not mean he is going to lie for you. And who said anything about him doing it for me? He'll do it for you. Now, that's where you're wrong. Calvin won't do anything for me, and vice versa. We're through. I'm not seeing him anymore. What is going on here? I got some report about a sniper. I wish I'd never heard anything about a sniper. What happened? Calvin, it all happened so damn fast, I couldn't do a thing. The shot, it came from a, from a low rooftop. 